Hey guys, today we're going to bag it with the best and install some Airbag Man airbags in the back of our GE Patrol. We've chosen to do this because we carry varied loads and sometimes we also carry our camper trailer as well. The airbags are going to give us that flexibility to adjust our suspension and improve safety and handling in our vehicle. We're also going to be installing a set of tower braces in our GE Patrol. These particular ones are made by Boss 4x4. They're a really solid bit of kit, but also they're very easy to install, guys. They're just a simple bolt-in design, and they're going to give us that extra protection we're going to need when we're fully laden and off-road. Okay, guys, so here's everything that comes with our kit. We've got some good quality airline, and it's already pre-covered in conduit to help protect it. These black things here are actually to go on top of our airbags to help protect the valves. And here's obviously our airbags. I've already pre-fitted the sleeves. If you want to know how to fit these sleeves, head on over to Airbag Man's YouTube channel and they actually show you how to do this step by step. We've got this sticker that comes with the kit. This is just to inform people that are driving your vehicle that it is fitted with airbags, okay? And we've got a little booklet here where we can keep our information, but there's also instructions here on how to fit the airbags. And there's a bunch of fittings. So you've got some uh, tire valves here. And that's actually how we fill our airbags and I'll run you through that step by step. In addition to all that, I've actually made a bit of a bracket. You don't have to do this, but I've decided to do it. And this is it, it's actually just a bit of um, aluminium angle iron. And I've actually just got two holes here, which is where our valves are gonna fit. And then I'm gonna bolt this to the back of our vehicle so we can access the valves to put air in them. So this will obviously be the left side of the vehicle and this will be the right side of the vehicle. You don't have to do this. If you wanted to, you could uh, drill holes in your bull bar. You can fit them inside the fuel cap, which some people do. Try to be inventive, guys. It's your vehicle. Okay, guys, important safety tip. Today we're going to be working underneath our vehicle, so make sure you use jack stands and be safe. Okay guys, so our vehicle's jacked up now. Uh, we've got the jack stands underneath the vehicle, but we still have the jack in place just holding the diff where it is. Right now we're going to undo the sway bar linkages. That's going to help the diff drop all the way down so we can actually go ahead and um, get our springs. Okay, so now we're going to undo our lower bolt. Um, this nut just here. And once again, I'm just going to show you one side of this. Okay. Now we should be able to remove this shot from here. It might be a little bit hard, but... Okay, so we're just going to remove this shot now. Beautiful. Now the shock will just expand, just make sure it's not going to run into anything. And this ain't, so that's beautiful. Okay, so we'll get onto the other side now, and I'll come back to you. Okay guys, so we've gone and released our sway bar linkage now, so there's no pressure on that on both sides. And our shock is also released as well, so that's just sitting here out the way. We're going to lower the diff now. All right, guys, so I've gone and released all the shocks and the sway bars. I'm actually just going to release the brake proportioning valve here off the back of the diff. Okay. And I'm also going to remove this brake junction just here. I'm going to release the brake lines from this point here and on the other side of the diff from this point here. That's gonna allow our diff to drop without putting any excess pressure on our brake lines. So I'll come back to you when I've done that and I'll show you what I mean. Okay guys, as you can see, I've removed the brake proportioning valve. Some will argue you don't have to do this, but I just feel it's not necessary to stretch that spring any more than necessary. And I've actually unbolted this block here, this brake line block, and I've detached it from the diff housing just there, just on top of the diff just there, and just over here. But be careful when you're doing this. Okay, guys, so I've gone and lowered everything down. And as you can see, everything's nice and loose and ready to be done. Um, I did forget to mention, you do have to release these ABS lines as well. You don't want to put a lot of pressure on those if you can avoid it. And now we're going to install those tail braces. So let's get into that. Well, okay, guys, I'm just going to show you why you don't use side cutters to cut these pipes. If you go ahead and just watch this now. See, it squeezes the pipe almost completely shut and then cuts it. And as you can see, it's not a very good cut and it's not gonna get a very good seal. You wanna make sure that you use a Stanley knife to do something like this. You can actually buy purpose-built cutters. I'm actually very lucky that I did have one of these in my kit at home, 
and it actually cuts the pipe really well. As you can see there, the pipe remains completely circle and it's a real nice square cut as well. So just remember that guys when you're storing this kit. Okay guys, so we're just actually into fitting the uh, airbags into the coils now. And I'm just gonna run you through a step. It's not always necessary, but I'm gonna do that just so I can show you guys. Take off a short bit of hose. I've got plenty of hose left over, so I didn't mind using this much. Add the little red plug that comes in the kit, okay? And then insert that into your fitting. You can see, that's in there nice and tight. Okay, now, shouldn't let any air out. You undo your plug. Squeeze all the air out of the bag. Reinsert your plug. Now the airbag is kind of all sucked in and deflated. That's gonna make it a lot easier to install into your um, springs. So all right guys, it took a little bit of doing, but as you can see, there's a nice crease down the bag here, and that's allowed us to get it down to the spring, down the spring, and um, as you can see, that's right at the top of the spring. So now I can go ahead and remove that little valve, and as you can see now, the air will come back in. Push the little copper collar down, to then go ahead and remove that air pipe. Now we'll keep this for the other side, because I'll probably do the same to the other side. Okay guys, so you can see I run the air lines now. I've got them sitting through the, the uh, spring mount just there. You can see the Boss 4x4 um, brace kit in there as well, which looks fantastic. And I can actually just follow the line just through here. I've gone around the fuel tank, over top of the uh, tow bar. And as you can see, I've just come out here. And then the other one that goes through basically in the exact same fashion. to the shock mount. So as the instructions say, now I'm at that point where I need to connect up the airbags, connect up the lines, pressure test them, make sure there's no leaks, and put everything back together. Okay guys, I've got the bag in the coil spring now, and as you can see, that's sitting in there good. Now using this piece of pipe here with the little um, the little red tag in the end of it to, uh, to deflate the bag and then slide it into the spring definitely made things a lot easier, so I would definitely give that a go. Now before we hook anything up, this is actually the spring dampener. This doesn't come with your kit. Um, this came with my tower brace kit, um, and much like the standard one that is fitted to your car. So I just have to remember to install this. And that goes that way. And then we're gonna install this piece here, which does come with your airbag kit. Okay, now remember this first piece, you don't actually need it. Your springs will already have them sitting on top, but I'm replacing mine with a new one. So then we fit this piece here. Fantastic. Now, just a point of call, I'm gonna make sure that we get a really good clean cut on this. Okay, so just use these little cutters that I've got. Once again, a Stanley knife would be fantastic. I'm just going to pull that outside, push this into the spring seat, like so, and that's it. Beautiful. I'm gonna leave it like that and go to the other side. Okay guys, so here we are. You can see we've got our bag in place, and once again, we did use a short piece of air hose with that little red plug. Deflate the bag as much as you can, press that in, and it'll hold the bag in the deflated state, insert it into the coil, and it is really that easy. It's a little bit tight still, but it makes it a lot easier than trying to do it without this. So, so it's the same as the other side, guys. Um, this here is just a spring dampener. Um, your car would already have this on it, but I'm replacing mine because we've done the uh, Boss Tower Brace kit, and this came with it, so. So make sure we put these on the right way. Okay. This one here goes this way, facing upwards. Like so. And like I did on the other side, I'm actually just going to recut this end piece here, and just wait extra special care in getting it to the full 90 degrees, like so. And then press those in place, beautiful. And then I'll just push this conduit back over top. Okay, fantastic. So now I'm gonna hook up the valves and then we're gonna go through and just water test everything. Okay guys, we're just gonna install our fittings now into our custom made bracket. Just like so. We're install a washer and the nut. 
person on there like that. We'll do that up in a second. I'll just get the other one on. So you've got washer, another washer, and then the supplied nut. Beautiful. And I reckon I've got two 12 mils. Don't over tighten them because you can break the fittings. Beautiful. And in the back here, that's actually where our air lines will go. And we're going to run through that right now. Okay, so you see here we've got our pipes coming out through here. We'll just remove this conduit off here to expose the pipe. There it is. And we will go ahead and trim that conduit as well. You do actually get plenty of pipe with the kit, which is quite good. So if you make a mistake or you just need to run yours particularly a far distance, you can always do that. Okay. Now, I am just going to go ahead and cut these two pipes again, like I have the last few times. We're going to make sure we cut them nice and square. So I'm going to do that again. Beautiful. And around the same spot here as well, nice and square. Push these valves in place, good and secure, same on this side, push it in place. Now just so you understand guys, what I've done here is I've got this valve here for the left side of the vehicle and I've got that valve there for the right side of the vehicle, it's just going to make it a lot easier when we're uh, at the service station pumping things up. So, so I'm going to whip out my air compressor now, I'm going to put a bit of air in these and then I'm going to go and water test them. Okay guys, moment of truth. I've just got a spray bottle here with some soapy water in it. You can actually see that, that's um, not bubbling or anything. So obviously that fitting's really good. And we're just gonna check this fitting now. And there's no bubbling there. Okay, so we're at the valves now. Look at that. Fantastic. Okay guys, so I've just gone around and tested the all the fittings with some soapy water just to make sure that there's no leaks. Luckily we didn't have any, so that's been fantastic. Now we can go ahead and fit the springs back in place along with all the other bits and pieces. And um, after I've got everything bolted back in, then I'm going to go around and sort out the airlines, zip tie them in place and whatnot, and just make sure that everything's going to be in a good spot. So let's get into that. So, okay, guys, here we are. As you can see, I've got the valves just mounted here. And, you know, obviously this is the left-hand side and that's the right-hand side of the vehicle. And they actually come with some really good little valve covers as well just to keep the dirt out of them, which is really good. So, yeah, um... Okay guys, thanks for watching us install airbags into the back of our GE Patrol. I didn't film putting all the suspension components back together, it's just the reverse of pulling everything apart. If you're looking to bag it with the best, definitely check out Airbag Man. I will link their information down below, and if you have any questions, don't forget to put them in the comments. And hit that subscribe button guys, we've got plenty more videos to come. Thanks.